Hello everyone. So today we're going to be solving this uh, problem here on the left via the rectangular components and resultants method. So we have two forces P and Q that are acting on bolt A here as shown with the angles as shown. And we have to determine the resultant of these two forces. So first thing you wanna do with these types of problems, just starting out of course, until you get the hang of them, it's always helpful to draw a free body diagram. Now this problem at the start is not very complex, so a free body diagram may not be necessary from your point of view, but we're just going to start with one anyways. So since the forces are acting at point A, we're going to make point A our origin of our coordinate system here. And we have point P right here that is, or force P, sorry, that is 40 Newtons. And then we have force Q, which is 60 Newtons. The 40 is 20 degrees off of the X and 60 then is 25 off of the 40. So a total of 45 off of the X for the 60. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna break this down and we're gonna go through this very slowly with multiple steps. Um, the better you get with these types of problems, the faster you can move with them. So the first force we are going to look at is we are going to look at the 40 Newtons. And what we're going to do is we're going to break this up, this 40, into an X and Y component. So since the 40 is acting in the general direction of up and to the right, its components in the X and Y direction will be up and to the right. So for instance, just redrawing it here very quickly, we have our 40 Newtons like this. So since we are up and to the right, our Y component will be in the upwards direction and our X components will be to the right direction. So getting the X component of the 40 Newtons first, it is going to be, of course, our 40 Newtons of force. And then you're either going to sine or cosine the angle. Well, since the 20 over here is connected to the X, it is adjacent to the X. So that will be cosine because cosine is always adjacent. So anytime the angle is coming off that general direction or that general uh, coordinate, you want to use cosine. So since it is attached to the X, we're going to use cosine of 20 to turn that 40 kips into a component in the X direction. And that comes out to be 37.59 Newtons. And of course that is acting to the right. Now getting the Y, once again, it's going to be our 40 Newtons of force and then either sine or cosine. Well, since the angle is off of the X direction, the Y is opposite of that angle. And anytime you have um, a general direction that is not touching the angle that is shown, it is going to be sine because sine is opposite. So 40 sines of 20 gives us 13.68 Newtons of force, and that will be in the upward direction. Another way to make um, sure that you have the general sine and cosine correctly, well, the 40 is only 20 degrees off of the X here and it is a total of 70 from the Y. So most of this 40 is going to be translated into the X direction or to the right, and less of it's going to be in the Y direction because it is further away. So the components should reflect that with the FX being 37 and being higher than what's in the Y direction at 13.6. So those are the two components that we have for the 40. Now we just have to repeat the process for the 60. So we'll just go over here real quick. And once again, the 60 is just like the 40, it's up and to the right. So our overall components here will be up and to the right. With that being the FX and this being the FY. So the FX is going to be our force of 60 Newtons. They always start out with the force that you are trying to transform into the X and Y coordinate system. And once again, this is going to be cosine of the angle. Now you have to watch out because it needs to be the angle all the way to the X up here. So that'd be a total of 25 plus 40 or 25 plus 20, which gives us 45. 
So 60 cosines of 25 is 42, or cosines of 45, sorry, is 42.43 newtons to the right. Now, with this particular angle of 45 degrees, it doesn't matter if you use cosine or sine because cosine and sine of 45 are exactly the same. Um, but once again, it's the same method. We're going to use cosine uh, for the x direction because the angle's off of the x and that is adjacent. And we're going to use sine for the y direction <clears throat> because the y is opposite of that angle. It's not touching that angle. Um, as you can see here, the sine and cosine of 45 is exactly the same. So what we've done here is that we've taken our two forces up here and we've turned it into four forces in a rectangular coordinate system direction here in the X and Y systems. So we have the 40, which has been turned into these two forces in the X and Y, and then the 60 into these two forces in the X and Y direction. So we no longer need this uh, picture up here. We can just use the four forces that we have um, determined. So what we're going to do is that we are going to sum forces in the X direction, and we'll take everything to the right as positive. And we'll repeat that process for the Y direction, because what we want to get are two final forces, one in each direction. So we're going to sum everything up in the X direction, which would just be this one and then this one over here. So everything to the right will take as a positive number in this equation. So the first one for the 40 would be 37.59 Newtons. It is to the right. So it will be a positive 37.59 Newtons. And then this one over here for the 60, the 42.43 Newtons is also to the right. So it will also be a positive number. So that's going to be plus 42.43 Newtons. So the total in the X direction comes out to be 80 point. 02 newtons, and it can't be a positive number, so I know my error direction is to the right. Just make a little gap right there. And then you just repeat the process for the y direction. So same thing here, we're taking up as positive, so everything in the upper direction will be a positive number in the summation equation. Everything in the downward will be a negative number. So the first one for the 40, we have 13.68 newtons. It is going upward, so we are going to take that as a positive number. And then for the 60, we have 42.43 Newtons. It is going upward, so we're also going to take that as a positive number inside this equation. That's all we have in the y direction. So the total in our y direction, after you add these all up, is 56.11 Newtons. Can okay, be a positive number, so I know the arrow direction has to correlate with this positive direction here is upward. <clears throat> So essentially what we have here is if we redraw our coordinate system, we've turned our angled forces of 40 and 60 X and y, into rectangular components in the X and Y direction. So along the X here, oh, that's supposed to be directly along the X. So this will be 80.02 Newtons. And then directly along the Y here, we'll just make it nice and thick so it does look along the Y. And then along the Y, we have 56.11 Newtons. So the resultant will be between these two forces somewhere. So it's going to be in this general direction, which is up and to the right, which makes sense because the previous two forces were also up and to the right for each one. So the resultant between those two forces would have also have to be up and to the right. So this is the result we're looking for, R. So what you can do here is that you can take this system and you can turn it into a right triangle. That's the beauty of using um, comp uh, rectangular components and resultants. So essentially what we have here, if we redraw it as a right triangle, we have our resultant at our angle. We're going to keep the 80 down here in the X direction. And then we are going to copy and paste this Y component of 56.11 
and we have formed a right triangle here because the angle between the x and the y is always going to be a right or always going to be a right angle. So what we have formed here is a right triangle. So how do you solve for a hypotenuse side of a right triangle when you know the two legs, the two smaller sides of the right triangle? Well, that goes back to the Pythagorean theorem of a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where you can call these two legs side a and side b, and then the resultant can be side c. So if you rearrange and put in the correct numbers and nomenclature here, your r, let me change colors real quick, your r is going to be the square root of this x summation tallied up squared plus the y summation tally up squared. So we have 80.02 newtons squared plus 56.11 newtons squared. Add those up, square root them, and this will give us our resultant value. And this number pops up to be 97.37 newtons. And it will be in that upward right direction because the components are up and to the right. So the resultant has to be up and to the right. Well, that is the force, but we also have to determine the angle at which that resultant is at. And that angle right here will be alpha, or you can call it whatever you want. Um, I'm just calling it alpha at this point, but it will most likely be off the x direction. You can also get it off the y if you wish, but most of the times um, calling it off of the x axis, the horizontal axis will be the best way to do it. So once again, our right triangle, now we know that this is 97.73. And since it is a right triangle, we can use cosine, sine, or tangent. Um, you can use your SOHCAHTOA if you want to, if you remember that. Um, but the easiest way to get that angle uh, is to just use the tangent. So the tangent of that angle will always be your total summation of your Fy over your summation of your Fx. Um, if you are in the rectangular components method and you want the angle off of the X. So if you have it in this way, where you have the summation of Y over the summation of X, this will give you the angle off of the X axis, as shown in this picture here. Well, the total angle, if you just rearrange and you solve, you will have the tangent inverse, and just make sure whenever you're calculating this, whatever calculator you're using, that you are in degrees and not radians. So we have our summation in our y direction, which was 56.11 all over our y, or our x summation is 80.02. So the tangent inverse of that gives an angle of 35.04 degrees. So in total, usually drawing a picture at the end helps, but you have the information you need. You have the resultant, you have its magnitude, its direction. Now you have the angle in which that resultant is at. So if you want to draw it on a coordinate system, having your X and Y axis and then point A down here, your resultant would look like this at 97.73 newtons at an angle off of the X of 35.04 degrees. And that would be kind of cut into the, nomen <laughs> the, the newtons right there, but that would be your overall final answer for this problem.